welcome to a special edition, very special edition. Yeah. Of not Friday Live, but Thursday Live here at Hot Shot Secret. Uh, a, a little experimental. We're testing out this Thursday afternoon, 1.30 p.m. slot, as opposed to our normal Friday at 3 p.m. We're going to do it for the next couple of weeks. See if you guys like it. So I guess let us know. Um, or if you're watching this later on a rerun and you're mad you missed it and we're not going to be on tomorrow, let us know you'd rather have it back at the old time or you'll catch us next week at 1.30. But we're going to try it. Yeah. It snuck up on me. It did. It snuck up on me, too. So I'm not very prepared. And But the cool thing is we've got a very special guest today. We do. And we've got some new technology. Levi pulled off some miraculous work. So... Uh, but let's cover the news first. Uh, well, first of all, like we always say, like and share the video. Uh, go ahead and share right now because we're going to have someone special on that you guys are going to love. Um, it is none other than... Do you want to tell them? It's right here, so oh, I think okay. we have to. It's LaVon Miller. LaVon Miller is going to be on. So as you all know, we finally had an Outlaw Diesel Super Series race right here in Ohio this past weekend. It was a blast. Uh, thanks to Firepunk Diesel for, for uh, bringing the series to Ohio. Yeah. So... Who better to have on as a guest right after that but LeVon himself to, so we can kind of recap the weekend and and talk about how things went for yeah. those of you that might have missed it. Yeah, for, for it being a first event, it actually was really well put together and it, it was actually a pretty decent crowd that showed up as mm -hmm. well for being in Ohio. And it was different. It wasn't your normal outlaw race. No, no, it definitely wasn't. Well, we'll and, get into that. We'll get yeah. into that with LeVon, so uh, we'll touch on that. But we'll answer your questions. So if you have questions, post them below. If you got questions for LeVon Miller... Post them below. We'll make him answer those too. He didn't. We didn't tell him that, but we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah, make him do he that. Knows now. And uh, free product giveaway today is going to be FR3. It says in honor of our testing with Firepunk. We did. We we really developed a lot of our FR3 testing with Firepunk. So uh, FR3 good for gas and diesel. So all you guys out there, post your questions below. We'll answer them, and some lucky people are going to get some FR3 shipped out to them. Uh, what do we get? We got a new article up. We do have a new article up. It was just posted this morning. That infographic: a dramatic reduction in DPF regions. Uh, most people have heard about it. We did a case study with the city of Columbus. Where, oh, that's a good where one. Where we helped lower the regions from 36 a year down to six. Yep. A lot of people were like, "Yeah, how'd that happen?" Well, now you have the case study right in front of you. You can read it and read some of the I'm, interviews that happened. With I believe it, it was a two-step, right? We did diesel extreme EDT treatment. Correct. So nothing right. special. Every everything that we offer out on the shelf for everybody out there, our two-step fuel treatment for the diesels, uh, diesel extreme every six thousand miles, I think they did, and then right. EDT in every tank and reduced the regens down that much. It was literally a savings of three or four thousand dollars. Or yeah. Levi's got it up. Oh, we can actually see, by the yeah. way, that's new yeah. technology. Yeah. We can actually so, see the screen now, too. And, so. and just so everybody is aware, it wasn't a 2008 Freightliner and a 2013 Ford yep. F550 6.7 liter. So, yep, it looks like they saved over two grand each, and I think the product cost was like 150 bucks. Right. So, for fleets out there, give us a ring. You, you'll get a guy like TJ on the phone. We can help you out with that stuff. And for your everyday driver, uh, you, you can pick it up off the shelf, order Absolutely. it online. Find a local dealer. Uh, it's EDT and diesel extremes available widely now. Absolutely. So subscribe to our email newsletter down there in the corner of our home screen, which I don't know if it's going to be there much longer. I don't know where it's going if it moves, but the website's coming soon. And so uh, keep keep up on the new website. <laughs> Check out our digital magazine. It's on there as well. Like and follow the Facebook page. How about some dealer shout outs? We dealer like shout outs. Some of the new dealers that just signed up with us, some of them have been dealers for a while. Uh, Pure Diesel Power out of Marshfield, Wisconsin. Yep. Welcome, guys. Welcome aboard. Our Far West Services out of El Paso, Texas. Sandcrest Trailer Sales in Billings, Missouri. Rudy's Performance in Burlington, North Carolina. Rudy's. Northern Utah Diesel Experts in Logan, Utah. G&J Diesel in Billings, Montana. G&J. And then Banghart Diesel in Wahoo, Nebraska. I think we're going to touch on we'll Yeah, we'll touch on, on some, some of these guys too. In, in a little bit anyways. So what's going on at Hot Shots TV this weekend? Uh, Saturday, 1, 1 a.m.? 1 a.m. So late Friday night on Truck U, they're going to be covering our Diesel Extreme EDT. That's that two-step that gets you those regens down that we just talked about. So tune into that. And then Sunday morning, we have a brand-new premiere episode of Truck U at 10.30 a.m. Uh, they're going to be covering our Stiction Eliminator. So... Make sure you tune into that Sunday at 10.30 a.m., brand new premiere episode. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think we shared on Facebook, there's another history episode, episode where they are redoing the engine and they put Hot Shot Secret Adrenaline in it. We had shared it on our Facebook page that was premiering this What you weekend. talking about, Levi? Oh, it's probably the engine builder. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I didn't know that was airing this weekend, but what that is is we partnered up with Summit Racing. Summit Racing it has a team that runs at Mid Ohio here, one of the uh, endurance cars. Right. Um, they are moving a Fox body Mustang up to like the class five, which is the exotics. So this badass Fox body Mustang that's going to be racing with Lamborghinis and Ferraris and all that crazy stuff. And Summit Racing did the build on it. We partnered up with them. They're going to be running all of our fluids, adrenaline racing line of fluids. So we're really excited about that. And they're actually going to debut it later this year at Mid Ohio, which is kind of our backyard here. So yeah, really cool project. I didn't know there was an episode coming up, but tune into that. Find check our Facebook page. I guess it's on there about where that's going to be. Uh, new product alert. New product alert. Actually, the full synthetic Green Diamond 1540 engine oil is now available. 2604 per gallon. A lot of people had been asking when we went to the 1540 Green Diamond that was semi-synthetic. They had asked for a 1540 full synthetic. So we came out with it for you guys. Also, the lubricity add additive will be available soon. I'm sure we'll get into a little bit more, but there was some people this past weekend that got to try some of it. Um, and some will blame that lubricity additives for making their cars go faster and go on red light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Trey, if you're watching, um, I, I, told, uh, I told Aaron it was his fault you broke out. Too much lubricity. Uh, speaking, so... Oh, yeah, so the lubricity additive also, we actually handed a lot out at the racetrack. Yeah, we did. So um, a lot of And our, then there were some people that... Uh, <laughs> some people had, had... Don't even say it. <laughs> some people should have used it. Yeah, That's what he's even, saying. Well, well, and some people got a hold of it that probably shouldn't have had it. Yeah, they, someone stole some. <laughs> so we, we don't have it quite ready for market yet. We're, we're working on labels and packaging right now, but I did bring some samples out, give it to a lot of our sponsored drivers, a lot of our sponsored race teams. Uh, it is the final product, so it's it's ready to go. So I'm hoping to get some feedback from those guys. Right. But as we kind of reported the last couple of weeks, the numbers are through the roof. It is hands down the highest lubricity by far, by like twofold of any product that's been on the market. So for those of you that are looking to add some lubricity to this dry fuel, um, I know a lot of the racers are, need it with the CP3, CP4 pumps. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of that are running even some of this new... Some of the drag racing fuel that's really dry, we've got it figured out now. We've got a lubricity additive that will be out soon. And some of our teams got it, so yeah. hopefully we get some feedback on that. Ooh. So, last week, like we said, we were at the, the, the Outlaw Diesel Revenge here in Ohio, and thanks to Firepunk Diesel, so if our technology works out, let's uh, invite on our, our host for the evening, Mr. LaVon Miller. And it worked. What's up, LaVon? How you doing, bud? How you guys doing? Nice to join you today. Thanks for coming on, man. You are our first screen-in-screen screen, tapped-in guest. So uh, I feel yeah. so special. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we, we, would, we wouldn't expect anybody but you for this first one. So um, first off, thank you. Thanks to Firepunk. The whole industry, and especially us Ohio people, were so excited to finally have an event here in Ohio. Personally, I got to sleep in my own bed and go to a race all weekend, so that was enjoyable. So uh, thanks to all you guys for actually bringing ODS to to our little part of the land. Yeah, well, thanks thanks to everybody for uh, Hot Shot Secrets for their part and what you did in the Saturday Night Show, and all of Ohio, I guess, that came out and did represent. I know... The uh, Dayton area, Xenia area, was uh, they fought a bunch of tornadoes a couple days before, um, and I'm sure that affected uh, some people's decisions. They were cleaning up trees and branches and yards and helping their neighbors, and we still ended up having about 2,500 people through the gates for the weekend. So for everybody that came out, I want to thank them. So I really appreciate everybody's support for the event. Yeah, absolutely. And to that, the, uh, the Thursday before the event started, we had a little – uh, food and drinks for all the vendors and racers that came by because uh, you know a lot of times we know what it's like traveling in and you got to set up your booth and having to get checked into your hotel trying to find some food and the funny thing was I well it wasn't funny I went to pick up the food we ordered and they couldn't even make the sandwiches because there was there's a water sh shortage they had a water uh, you know alert so the town was really reeling off the back end of these tornadoes so um, it was 
I, I, we had a couple of people come by the booth that uh, I, I don't know how how well how much they were impacted by the storm, but they said they were grateful just to get out of the house and right. come do something. They weren't even planning on coming, but after the week they had, they said we just need to get out and enjoy something, and that event provided that for that family. So even though I was a microcosm of everything, it was cool to see that somebody got out of uh, you know a bad week and enjoyed the weekend. So that's always a bonus. So let's start by recapping uh, the weekend. So let's run through some of the class winners. Um, ODR ET bracket was Ryan Riddle. Uh, Ryan's uh, a firepunk build, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and Ryan's a, he's, he's a hotshot secret sponsor driver too. What, what kind of builds he got? He's, he's had that thing pretty locked in for a while. Yeah, that's got uh, like 125% over XRG injectors. A 12 mil stroker pump, a 67, 67 stock appearing turbo on a stock manifold, fire pump transmission, fire pump tuning, um, and he's a good driver because he gets out there and he races every weekend, and you can't get good if you don't practice, and if you go out there and you do it, uh, the results show up, and he kicked butt this weekend and ended up coming home with two wins yep. in two different classes. Yep, that was the next thing up was the 770 index class winner, Ryan Riddle, and he actually right. hot lapped that. And give a shout out to uh, Trey Sykes as well. Trey Sykes uh, faced Ryan Riddle in the 770 Index right. Finals, which they're both Hotshot Secret sponsored drivers. So we love that and all Hotshot Secret Finals there. That was awesome. And right. uh, uh, Trey broke out painfully. He ran a 7.6999, three nines on it. He was one yeah. ten thousandth from being on the number. Um, we've been joking that it was the new Libricity product he, he tried for the first time. It gave him one to thousand too much. But uh, so congrats to Trey for, for you know running through that field and getting to the finals there and making an, an all hot shots finals. But congrats to Ryan too. Ryan hot lapped that, that championship. So he, he ran the ET final and literally hot lapped back to the starting lines. And, and he won two right. finals within probably two minutes, you yeah. know. Yeah. So that's, that's not easy to do, but that shows you how much Ryan's got it dialed in. Yeah, that's part of the agreement that ODSS has. ODSS will protect the uh, the competitors within each class uh, to make sure they don't have to hot lap. But if you choose to dual class and then you and you make it to the finals in two classes, they will not wait on you. Sure. So that's the choice that you need to make. And so Ryan's got some extra coolers on his truck on the transmission. And literally, we were waiting for Ryan to, as fast as he could drive around back from the back on the return road. He pulled right back up to the staging lanes and took finals in the next class. Yeah, impressive. I don't think you could do that with the S10, could you? I don't think so. <laughs> if the block, it'd, it'd probably be a little mad about it. Yeah. Uh, let's see, 670 index class. Uh, Kyle Hutchinson took that one home. Uh, you, you know anything about his build? Yes, that is actually a, um, the truck is owned by Mike Bussey uh, down in Cincinnati area. And that is a transmission I built in the milk parlor back in 2011, 2012. No kidding. Um, it's been around for a while. It used to be a dually truck, and it's kind of evolved over the years. And they've, uh, I think we did a set of twin turbos on it in 2013, maybe. Um, but now it's kind of, they've, they've peep upped it. Uh, Kyle Hutchinson has been doing most of the work, and so Mike lets him drive it. Um, but they've kind of, uh, they're, they, they, uh, Kyle shop is Little Wayne Motorsports, yep. and he's been he's been plugging away at that truck for you know six years, and it's finally become consistent. I mean, they were running right on the number all yeah. all week, and so congrats to them because they kind of they kind of felt like they were the underdogs. They don't have a lot of practice in the 670 class, and they came out and did very well. I'm very glad to see them do good. Yeah, and I remember on uh, on some of the qualifying runs in the 670 class, I kept hearing. 670 with a two, 670 with a four, 670 with a seven. Right. I mean, that <clears throat> class was on it, so you knew it was going to yeah, be competitive. Yep, yeah. very tough class. It makes it fun because oh yeah, you get uh, 20 trucks that can run right on the number, and then it's it's a driver's game. Absolutely. You know, the truck once the trucks are doing their job, and then uh, then it's who can drive the best. And, and I should say, um, Mike Pussy had messaged on Facebook that. Kyle was running a lot of uh, hot shots in the fuel tank there, so thanks, Kyle. We appreciate that. That's good stuff too. 
Uh, let's see, the Firepunk Outlaw 590 class, which is becoming such an awesome class, you know, that you guys brought on this past year. Uh, Brett Markham was the winner there. That's the, the Banghart yeah. truck, right? Right. Yep. Banghart's yep. one of our Hot Shots dealers as well. So, tell you know, I'm sure you know about that truck. Tell us. Uh, I don't know as much about that truck. I know that is a, I'm glad to see him do good. He's had a lot of issues that he's fought through the last three years. Um, he was at... Um, UCC this year, and it's got a fleece motor in it. I believe it has a, a big set of compounds or triples. I'm not sure which one it is, uh, but he was fighting through some transmission issues and finally got those sorted out. The truck goes out, runs the number, and he went all the way through to the finals and wins it. So it's kind of nice uh, for a guy like that. You see a guy who struggles for a couple of years when he finally gets everything together. Uh, it makes racing fun again because when you see yeah. if you struggle for two years straight, you feel like throwing in the towel. So, for the well, guys if that you don't, if you never struggle, you never you never really enjoy the wins yeah. too. So, well yeah. earned. Yeah, it makes it uh, that much more rewarding when you pull off a win after fighting through some some uh, issues like that. So I'm glad to see him do good finally, and I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. You know, as as the 590 class grows, there's a lot more trucks that can go out and run that 590 number uh on the dot and that's fun yeah that's a really cool class i'm glad they added that and we got the hot shot seeker pro street class with uh the winner johnny gilbert this weekend from stainless diesel another hot shot seeker dealer sponsored driver so uh we're happy to have all our our guys really cleaning the house and johnny's really got the truck moving man yes powerful truck he's got a lot of horsepower um, I know they've, they've uh, got the transmission working good. That's got that Turbo 400 in it now, or it'd be like a 4L60, the four-wheel drive version of the Turbo 400 with a billet SCS transfer case. And you can tell the truck's working well. Um, they're still trying to find out their power, power management. If they give it too much, the truck wants to kick the tires. But you can tell once they get that thing ironed out and the suspension dialed in, it's going to be very consistent and very fast. So it was a interesting finals with Derrick Rose. You know, he won a five. Derrick Rose won a five twenty eight in the finals against Johnny's five forty eight, and Johnny just beat him on the tree. Yep. So uh, Derrick had a good shot at winning that thing, but he made himself a sandwich for a bit too long. <laughs> he sure did. Maybe he was <laughs> he was recollecting the the dyno pull he had. Cause there you Derrick go. Hey, crushed he it on the put, dyno out there too. Yeah, Derrick did a uh, thousand or. 2330 on the dyno yep. that took him a thousand dollars so he kind of essentially won before he ever finished racing yep yep and of course a ucc winner of course he's running the dyno in between drag runs so it's right. it's only fitting so and uh yeah and didn't johnny didn't johnny have an issue did he have a yeah he broke uh he broke two push rods and yeah. he needed push rods a, he needed one inch longer push rods because he's got a deck plate motor and it's a flat tappet so we were, he was running around trying to find somebody that had a flat tappet uh, deck plate push rod. And like the stuff that we have in our engine would be for a roller cam so that the push rod's not quite the same length. And the quad cab was the only flat tappet uh, deck plate motor that we had. And I told him that if uh, Landon loses and the quad cab's park, he can, he can borrow them. But if he keeps winning, he can't have them. So, <laughs> Uh, through the King Speed guys, they found a set of push rods about two hours away and went after it and got the thing together. So luckily oh, for that good. long break between Q3 in the morning and eliminations in the evening, he had enough time to get it fixed. Awesome. And, and speaking of King Speed, I remember, I, I believe it was uh, Friday night. It was yeah. late. It was like 1130 or something. And a couple of guys from King Speed came over to our, our booth in vendor row asking if we had any hoodies left and they looked like they really needed it because and i you know i was asking them why and because they said we got it we're going to be up all night working on the motor didn't they tear that whole motor apart yeah they melted all six pistons oh. in uh seth huggins truck um or higgins and they tore the motor down and they were actually like 11 30 they were going to go back to our shop and tear a core six seven motor down that we had to steal six seven used pistons out of it so they could run but i think they found they found some somewhere else because we ended up not having to go back and tear a motor down for them but um they they definitely persevered hard they had a motor completely torn down changed six pistons and made uh elim made yeah made uh eliminations in the evening yep and i think they won i think they won the first round and went out in the second round gotcha yeah good for them 
shows the dedication these guys got. Yeah. And in the in the industry too, the fact that everybody will help them out, you know, that everyone want to make sure everybody got got their trucks back up and running, and that's great to see. So in Pro Mod, you know, hometown <laughs> favorite. Here comes the S10. Everybody's ready to see what it can do on its home track and everything. And S10 wasn't in the finals, was it? No, let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's first no, off we... give a big congrats to Rawlings Barnes. Right. Uh, Rudy's took home the Pro Mod Championship there. Uh, I, and like we said, it was an all-power stroke final, uh, along with Gray's Diesel, who I know – um, obviously, we, we were, we're a sponsor of Rudy's. Rudy's is running all our fluids right. now, which we're really happy about. And now, like we mentioned today, they're now carrying all of our products, too. So right. welcome aboard, Rudy's. Uh, congrats, Rawlings. Congrats, Nathaniel, the whole crew, for, for pulling off the Pro Mod win. And as well as uh, uh, Gray's Diesel, too. I know they yeah. were having some transit issues. Yeah, Gray's Diesel was having a real bad issue with the uh, delamination of the clutches. So right. we had worked with them with the Nano Shift technology and our adrenaline transmission fuel, or... Uh, fluid the stuff that these guys at fire right, exactly. really helped us formulate so that was one of the things we we had given it some of it to them that go ahead and test it and see if it would work and at first they were like yeah this is great and everything i um, lowering the operating temperatures and everything and then of course they had some malfunctions where they had to drop the training and and reapply fluid so yep but they made it to the finals yeah and they, they gave did. it a heck of a run so um yeah. but we, we didn't see the s10 there so can we talk about it, Levon? Yeah, we can talk about it. Was it the no, bump it box? Was, uh, it was uh, kind of a we we have we two weeks before that we were at the uh, street. Uh, what was that? Judgment Day, no right. prep race, and we broke the sprag. Um, last year we had great results. We run a Rossler Turbo 400, went 69 passes, did not touch the trans or the converter. You literally can't get a better result out of a transmission when you're running over 2,000 horsepower. Um, this year, uh, um, we upgraded the transmission to the larger intermediate shaft that Rossler came out. Ben Shaddy had broke a couple of them last year. We were, figured we were next in line to break it, um, and so we went ahead and upgraded. And instead of just sending our trans out and getting it upgraded, we kept the good trans that we had last year and bought a new unit so that we have a full spare. Um, and so the, the good new trans with the big intermediate is what we broke the sprag in at Judgment Day No Prep. So we threw the spare in, and, and long story short, when we sent that, we put the good trans to shift it freight to Rossler, and it ended up in somewhere in Missouri till we figured out that um, the freight was messed up on it. And long story short, it took a week and a half to get to Rossler, and so we did not get that trans back till Friday at like five o'clock so we ran our qualifying with the uh, last year's trans and after qualifying was over fr friday night we swapped the big trans in no big deal we're ready to rock and roll for saturday and uh turns out when we go to el eliminate our qualifying round three it bumped in everything worked good except we had a little bit too much power in it we had to pedal it so now we were in eliminations round one against uh brian gray uh, you know, they've been five flat. It's a fast truck, but we've been, we've got them covered by pretty good. We thought we'd play it safe and turn it down a little bit just to make sure we don't have to pedal it or kick the tires and lose the race that way. But apparently that was enough that it affected the uh, ability to bump in. So it wasn't as much load on the transmission. So when we hit the bump, the tires moved one time, it flickered the bottom bulb, and we could not get the thing to get in the beams. And Larson had to let off the let off the throttle to let off the trans brake to get in the beams. Um, it just simply wasn't enough time, and we um, we lost. So you have a faster truck, but that's why they call it racing and not winning, because uh, you can't <laughs> race on paper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> happen. So we uh, yeah we ended up uh, going back to the same setting that we had in eliminations or qualifying for when we ran the big tire. We're like, well, you know, we pulled power out of it. That was our problem. Let's put the same tune-up back in that we ran for qualifying when we ran the big tire. We went up against Stinky Pinky, um, Dean Kearns, and the same thing happened. It bumped once and it wouldn't bump in. Um, but we, we ended up, uh, we didn't get a race out of it, but we did make a full pass and it went a 431 at 177. Oh, was it? So, Wow. So it was a, it was a solid pass. Um, so we've 
I think this week we spooled it up probably 12 times and tried five different settings on the bump setting just to make sure that we've got this under control. So as of now, we changed some hertz on the way that the trans brake works, and now I've got about a 700 RPM window that the trans brake works. So hopefully nice. whatever whatever happens Saturday won't happen again. <laughs> nice. Well, it's, I, I know that the lick you made against, uh, well, um, against Stinky Pinky there, it looked really good. Obviously, they had the, they had the clocks off, so right. I'm not surprised it was a 431. It looked really good. Right. I that was, was uh, he, he left a little bit before he was on the staging limiter, so he left about 10 pounds of boost short. So I went a 116 to the 60 foot, but everything else was right on par for a mid 20s pass. Nice. So an hour was there and stuff. So uh, like our 425 at or 427 at 177 pass was a, with a 108 and a 110 60 foot, and this was a 116. So that's sure. where our ET was was on the 60 foot. And I know you won't tell us what. Uh... What Dean ran, but I bet that would have been a good race. Right. Yeah, it would have been a big good race. Uh, they race a lot of no time stuff. And uh, talking to Bill Lutz, he was like, if if we'd have been able to be on the tree, we'd have had a drag race. So um, maybe next time. Yep. Okay. Well, so they should pro mod again. Congrats to Rawlings Barnes and and well, Rudy's down there. Before we move on, I I wanted to ask Levon. I I thought there was a record broken on Friday night by Gray's Diesel at being the fastest seven three. Correct. Yeah, I believe so. I think they went five zero something at, uh, and I think that was the fastest seven three pass ever. Huh. Wow. Uh, I can't say I can't say for sure. I don't really follow that world that much, but I mean, if you look at what the seven three has done, I mean that that's getting down. I mean, yeah. five flat is not slow, and uh, you're doing it with a seven three. You know, that's not a P pump motor. It, it's a, still a true seven three. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. Right. So con congrats, Grace Diesel, on that as well. And our last class was uh, Pro Dragster. Of course, Jared Jones took that home. Uh, congrats to From Shy Diesel. Jared, Shy Diesel, another dealer of Hot Shot Secret products there. So uh, <laughs> we, we, we had some good representation <laughs> out nice. there. So. And they went, what, a 426, I, I think, th was the best for their weekend? Well, I, I think in the qualifier it was 426, right? Yeah. Yep. I don't know what it yeah, for the weekend, I, I know I saw I didn't one see the final run. at one eighty somewhere in there. Yeah, but Jared's Jared's got them moving, and you know, uh, he was up at uh, like uh, Norwalk a couple Norwalk. weeks ago, wasn't yep. it? Levi yeah, was up there, Super Le Comp or something like that. Yeah, Levi's other job, he actually uh, he actually shoots uh, drag racing photography um, okay. when he's not here doing the computer stuff, and he sent me a picture of of Jared Jones dragster, and I'm like. What's going on? Like it's, did I forget we got an LL race this weekend? But they traveled over here to Ohio to to, to run with the gasser, so uh, the, that, that's pretty cool to see him out here. Maybe he was trying to get some some pre Ohio runs in before the <laughs> before the outlaw. So, uh, all right, I got some random questions to, for you, but I, we can wing this stuff, man. Because, um, but how do you think the first ODSS leg in Ohio went? Besides the weather on Friday, of course. I think overall, I have no complaints. It was it was about as good as it can go. Um, you learn pretty quickly that there are some things that you can simply not plan for, obviously weather, and then that piles more things into the schedule for Saturday than what you know. And you also don't know how many entries there's going to be. Like we sold a total of 123 tech cards. Um, so when we set up our schedule for Saturday – I have no idea. Do not. Do I need to budget an hour for the All first right. round? Do I need to budget an hour and a half? So you have to take a good educated guess at that stuff, and then literally the whole day of the event, you're improvising. You're just looking at the time, looking at the classes, figuring out what you need to do. So overall, I could. Uh, I had a really good team of people put together. Heather Fox was the event coordinator. Heather killed it. Yeah, all the people at with Firepunk pitched in and helped. And then we had a local church youth group, um, United Bethel. They they were they were 15 people on staff yeah. Friday and Saturday to help with parking, trash cans, restrooms, just you name it. They did a great job. Just keep making sure that everything was still running smooth. So having that help there really takes a burden off of my shoulders um, to make sure that all the little odds and ends are getting taken care of without me having to micromanage it. Yep. Yeah, but everybody did do a good job, especially Heather. And I'll tell you from from a sponsor, from a vendor's point of view as well. Uh, you know, 
the communication, I know a lot of people out there don't care about this, but just let's <laughs> show you know, the communication and the organization leading up to the event uh, helps us out a lot as sponsors and vendors knowing where we have to be, right. what, 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 all that stuff. Heather was great at it. I mean, for being a first year event, um, you would have thought it was like the 10th year, you know? So it's like, I just got something today from, um, from Rudy's that's already contacting us about the Rudy's finale at the end of the year. So like, you know, they've got this thing that down, they've done it so much. Well, it was the same thing like with, with Heather for a first year event for her to get all that together for Firepunk. So shout out to Heather Fox. Um, she did, she did a great job. Plus she was there when Rick's running too. So right. she was, she was right. dual duties, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was very happy with how everything went. You really, really have no complaints. So look forward to next year. We're just going to take what we learned and uh, make it better and try to prepare ourselves for some of the some of the dead time that we had. We had like 10, some 10, 15 minute breaks in the evening show that I didn't want to have. Um, but we'll have more we'll have more activity there to put somebody on the track or something there for the fans. But I well, think to uh, speak to that, one thing, like we said, that made this event unlike any other outlaw event was some of this extra stuff you, you had. The presenting of the colors was awesome. The Blastro van, the Jet Dragsters, Stinky Pinky and Bill Lutz, the Power Wheels. Well, and even even Dorian Reyna from Power Stroke Ingenuity kind of chipped in by taking the, my brother's keeper down the track with his Marine flag and American flags. And, yep. I mean, it, it was and, great. And so my question to you, LeVon, is did you have a chance to really soak any of that stuff in? Uh, knowing that yeah. you got to worry about a race team, you got to worry about the okay. event. Did you did you get a chance to sit back and enjoy that and at all or were you just uh... no definitely got to enjoy it I mean starting with the honor guard yeah. and uh, standing on the starting line seeing the honor come out honor guard come out present the colors um, and then uh, Lynn's wife Carrie and some friends of our Josh and Abby Helmuth they did a trio for the national anthem like they did I think they did a bang up job on it and just standing there you you're right in the middle of the hustle bustle and you stop and you sing the national anthem and it was a proud moment you know it was like you, you could tell that that um the little extra efforts that we took to make it make it something special um at least to me it sent chills up and down my back because it was awesome well I'll tell you what I have video of the chills up and down your back because at that moment I was I was out there on the track video in that and right when they kind of finished the national anthem and the honor guard was almost off the track um uh big don started getting into the all right let's get it going get the cars ready and there it's kind of moved on and before i and i was watching the honor guard kind of walk off and in my frame is you just sitting there staring at them and i don't even think you paid attention to everything starting to go back on you watched them make every last pace off of that track and i remember thinking like ah oh, they Finally, I'm glad he gets to enjoy that moment at least. So uh, I'll send you the yep. video. I'll let Connor play with it because uh, it was a good <laughs> shot. Good. What else we got here? Uh, so how stressful was it putting on this great event for the fans and racers, and how rewarding was it once it was over? Uh, it was definitely stressful, and it was definitely rewarding. Um, I, I got to say, though, a team really helped share that load. Um so I never, it, it was not, I, I didn't go into the event with sleepless nights from not being able, you know, th worrying about all this stuff. I didn't worry about it. Like Heather really had a lot of a good handle of it. And uh, also thanks to the Rudy's team, they, they shared good tips and information to us and Heather uh, to make sure that we had an idea of what we were looking for. And so having the team behind us, that was a big relief. Um, the day of, having some of the racers come up with certain complaints that you have to make on the spot decisions. That's the stuff that's a little stressful because you really, you want everybody to leave happy. Um, but you can't make everybody happy. And the tower had some mistakes that they made. They had, uh, the light set to, um, on have deep no, stage. A deep stage. Yeah. Well, we didn't catch that until it had happened twice. Yeah. Um, and so those are decisions like what, what are official rules? What do we need to do to make this right? Can we rerun? And like Derek Rose and Michael Dalton needed a rerun. Michael Dalton had a hurt engine, so that put him from quarterfinals to semifinals because he couldn't make the he couldn't make the rerun. So you know that stuff is it's not fair, um, but there's you know it's human error and there's mistakes, and so you have to buy the book. You but know, I think what, it was handled well. You know, I mean everybody got grouped together and 
Is that what the rules right. were? And they said. So those, those are the things that uh, I'll pay attention to next year. We write it in our book and say, hey, let's double check that uh, the tower for sure knows all the rules and regulations for the Owl Diesel Super Series. Because um, according to Kill Care, they say any time that there's a pro tree, you can't deep stage. Yeah. Um, but it's not a rule for ODSS. So sure. we have to kind of specify that kind of stuff. Well, let's check if we got any questions real quick. Uh... USMC Racing is in there, of course. Yeah, everyone's surprised it's a Thursday. Yeah, we know. Sean Bottomley, hey guys, won't be chatting, driving, and listening. All right. Uh, Troy Kennedy says, love my patriotic shirt. Thanks, guys. Hope to see you guys in July. Oh, you're probably one of our winners from last time. Yep. Good stuff. Thanks, Troy. Michael Chapnick says, not really sold on Hot Shots products. Well, let's talk, Michael. <laughs> Sean Bottomley, oh, by the way, the gear oil you guys sent me for the binding and the rear diff made a huge difference. Thanks, I'll be going to review it. By the way, this is Bearded Medic. Bearded Medic, how many different aliases no, do you I have? No, I think his other page got banned. You get, so. you, are you in Facebook jail? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, hey, Lynn Miller's watching. What's up, Lynn? Andy Shank, how you doing? Troy's responding to Michael. What are you having problems with specifically? Scientists are complicated. Have to dumb it down for me. That's what we do here. But Kevin's out. Kevin answers the questions. We dumb it down real for, for everybody. Dan Yost says, I need oil, Kyle Fisher. Dan Yost, you need a full window banner for that. You know the rules. <laughs> Trey Sykes, lots of lubricity and not enough brake pedal. <laughs> yeah, poor Trey on the .999. So, uh, uh, Sean Bottom, oh, that's, that's Bearded Medic, says, only lubricant not in the truck This Hot Shots is front diff and transmission. We'll be using TSE soon. Get it done. That way you're, you're fully loaded in there. James Bruce, he's a regular LeVon. He says, I'm just going to have to bounce some ideas off you about Olga and bring her out again. So he's a, he's a, he's a big fan. He's on regularly. So, and we hear about Olga a lot. Yeah, so. We do. James, we can get you in touch with LeVon for sure. And Heather chimes in. Heather Fox, the whole team did an awesome job. So grateful for the whole crew and everyone that made it a great event. Absolutely, Heather. Heather, you crushed it. Thank you so much for keeping everything flowing and getting everything organized ahead of time. Um, uh, we bring LeVon back up. We got... So, any other, any, any other thing you want to button up about the event that you want, you want to touch on that we haven't addressed, LeVon? Well, I think we've pretty much covered it, um, but I do want to make sure that bring awareness for if there are any tips or advice that other people have that attended, um, we're open to the suggestions. Uh, like, we want to make this a show for the spectators um, because if I think there's a lot of cool diesel trucks, I love diesels and I love going fast. Um, but if the if we can't put on a show that the spectators enjoy, we're just racing to beat ourselves, and that's not what I'm after. I I want to show off what we got. I mean, that's part of everybody that's doing diesel. So, if you guys got ideas of what we can do to spice up the show and make it better and make it a better event, um, I know of some you know some small things that I want to change. Um, but I I really want to make this a event that can grow and we can end up with 10,000 people in the stands and when we're all done, they stand and cheer, and they have a good time, and they want to come back next year. Yeah, I, I think you guys are well on your way, too. Yeah, I, I do, too. We had a great time, and I know um, I, I know bringing the unique aspect of some of the gassers into it. Yeah. I asked a couple of people about, the, about that. I said, you know, how do you guys feel about this diesel event that's got these gassers in there? I said, everybody loved it. They thought it was cool. Well, not just gassers. We had jet engines there, too, right, you right, know. Right. So it was a little bit, a little bit uh, for everybody, the kids even, with the, with the power wheels. Um, so yeah, it was, it, it was quite an event. Um, we're already looking forward to next year. Um, again, I'm grateful that we got an Ohio one finally. And, um, you got some fire was, questions before we go? I think LeVon had something to say. Yeah, go ahead, bud. I was going to say, I was kind of surprised. I, with the following, like how many Ohio diesel trucks there are, like we dyno one to two trucks every day that are coming from Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Kentucky. Like I was really kind of expecting to draw that uh, central Ohio crowd of diesel trucks. I don't think I saw that many local diesels that were new. Um, right. So I want to, I'm going to try to do my part in marketing 
testing and figuring out what I need to do to get these guys. I mean, they've got a lot of fast trucks. I mean, we dyno them every day. Um, so I think a lot of these guys are scared or intimidated. Um, if you guys are racing and you guys want to get into racing and it looks like fun, but you're not sure, you think you're going to embarrass yourself, we're here to help. Like, that's what we'll do. Like, show up at the shop, call me, message me on Facebook. Um, we'll go to a test session with you and I'll give you all the tips and pointers that you want because I want to see you guys out on the track and enjoying what you got because it costs a lot to make 800 horsepower and you may as well use it. And if you race at an event like this, you win two grand if you win or 1500 bucks. Makes it fun. Then you can go faster with that money. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a cycle. Excuse your feet. It just never ends. <laughs> don't <laughs> well, it ends once you get married. <laughs> Not really. Uh, so you got a few more minutes? We're going to talk about yep. Firepunk a little bit. Sure. Cool. Um, so we talk about our relationship uh, between Hot Shots and Firepunk all the time. But can you tell those that might not know about Firepunk what you guys do, what you guys specialize in? I, I think a lot of people from the outside think you, you build four-second race cars, and that's it. Right. And that's not really what Firepunk does as, as, a, as a core. It's what you can right. do. But you want to tell everybody in our world uh, what Firepunk does? Sure. Yeah, Firepunk is something that, I mean, we specialize in Dodge Cummins, and it's all things Dodge Cummins. If it's, uh, we have a transmission department, that's kind of what we uh, we started with, was building automatic transmissions, 47 and 48 REs especially. Um, we do between 40, we're in between 40 and 60 transmissions a month, kind of depends on what we're doing. Um, and that's a lot for just the average working truck, you know, guys that have landscape trailers and they buy a tuner and they run it for 100,000 miles and they tear up the trans and instead of just putting a stock replacement in it, we're upgrading the input shaft, the, the torque converter, the valve body, the clutches and making it to where they can turn their tuner all the way up, have that 500 horsepower and put a smile on their face and, and not have to worry about, you know, breaking their trans. Uh, so that, that really is a big part of our market is, is, is the transmissions. Uh, then we have a in-house dyno. Uh, my brother Larson runs most of the dynos. Myself and him do all the tuning. I've kind of, uh, over the last two years, tried to farm off a lot of the tuning stuff to Larson and have him job shadow and make sure that he knows what I know uh, because I wouldn't be able to do an interview like this on a day like this if I was on full-time tuning status because we've got a lot of tunes that go out on a daily basis and it's a lot of work. Uh, then we've got two full-time guys that are in fabrication. That's uh, my brother Lynn and Cody Fisher. Uh, they do great, great work uh, where we'll do roll bars, back halves, just traction bars, uh, turbo kits, twin turbos, triple turbos, single turbo piping. I mean, just all the stuff that, I mean, I have guys who come in who, you know, break a mount off of their truck and they just need it welded back up. We can do all that stuff in-house and we got tubing benders and pipe notchers and all that stuff. So. Uh, they stay busy, and then I've got two full-time techs that, like my brother Landon and uh, jo um, Josh Scruggs, just moved in from Virginia. Uh, he's a full-time tech, and these guys are turnkey guys. They can work on anything from head gasket job to motor rebuild, uh, rebuilding your differential, your transfer case. Uh, we've kind of got full service. If you've got a Dodge and Cummins, we can probably work on it, and I would say you know, 60% of our work is all just the working man's truck that we're working on daily drivers and, and work trucks. And then 40% are the hot rods that we're doing crazy fun builds on. Right. Right. And if, if you guys subscribe to their YouTube page yeah, and they, they post them up on, on, on Facebook as well, Connor, they got a great videographer guy with Connor. Yeah. He kills it. If you guys really want to know what goes on there, watch their, watch their YouTube page. I mean, they, they don't hide anything. It's very, out there, it shows you what goes on in day to day there at Firepunk. I love it. I'm addicted to them, so I watch every one of them. So yeah, we we were kind of questioning Friday because Jersey kept on Satan saying that he uh, oh, beat Levon Miller, and I'm like, what are you talking about, Jersey? And then he's, and then all of a sudden yesterday, I seen the video where Jersey beat the new 2019 Dodge Ram. I was like, oh, that don't even count. <laughs> Jersey's uh, a piece of work. He um, is never a dull moment. No, they made it, they made it to Mexico quick though. Yeah, to be able to I can't believe you're that close to the border. <laughs> hey, whatever we got to do. <laughs> yeah. All right, two more things with you. Uh, got to talk about Save the Racks. Um, it's a campaign that both both uh, Hot Shots and Firepunk's involved in. I was all excited this weekend because Emily Moeller was up from Texas. She made the trip all the way 
from Texas with Edgar and Mom and the whole crew. Um, so we had two Save the Rucks tracks, Save the Racks trucks out there this past weekend, which is cool. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Hotshot Secret uh, makes a $50 donation every time a Save the Racks truck goes down the track. Uh, this year we're doing a little something special uh, with the incentive on the S10 that every time it cracks another five one hundreds off of the world record, we're uh, uh, donating an extra uh, 100 bucks, I think, each time they right. do that. So this season alone, you guys have gotten from, I think you came into the season at 448. We're now down at 425. Yeah. And you ain't done, I'm sure. Nope. Uh, but why don't you talk a little bit about Save the Racks and, uh, you know, uh, what we do for this, you know, to, to keep in touch with all that. Right. Well, uh, let's talk about the Articona family a little bit. You know, they are, uh, Edgar is, Edgar and Robin um, are the owners of the S10. And Robin, which is uh, Emily's mother, um, she had a bout with breast cancer um, a couple years ago, and it was severe. It was a stage four cancer, and uh, she survived it. And they have, they're pretty passionate about bringing awareness to breast cancer awareness and uh, raising funds for to come up with a cure for it. So that's really where the Save the Racks campaign came from. And Edgar loves to play with diesel trucks. If you go down to Texas and visit him, you'll see uh, mega cabs like they're going out of style. <laughs> and I think he just almost can't help himself when he sees one for sale. Um, so, Edgar's, um, Edgar's like a cartoon character to me. Right. He's just like the, the Texas cartoon character with a bunch of trucks <laughs> to play with. But it's very, very down-to-earth family. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they're hardworking, and they love to see, you know, he wants to go fast. And uh, the original plan for the S10 was for Firepunk to finish the build, get it running, uh, get take it to the track, get a couple laps in, make sure it's going straight, and then turn it back over to the Articona family. And Amelie was going to be the full-time driver. And we last year, we got it together, and we quickly saw that it was a handful. Um, the chassis had... A good bit of flex in it and seemed like every other pass was um and I, I wouldn't say a near-death experience but we were all over the track we'd we drive an extra 25 feet to get to the finish line just because it was going left to right and we soon saw that hey we need to get this thing going straight before we can really turn this loose over to emily and let her drive it and it wasn't until this winter when we cut the thing in half and shortened it 10 inches now the chassis finally Which doing blew my mind I, when when I saw you sent me a picture of literally the truck cut in half, and I could not believe I'm like these guys are nuts, <laughs> and who would have thought shortening it ten inches, getting that wheelbase that much closer, and ever since then it's been an arrow. But uh, but I'll, I guess a lot of it was the rigidity of the frame. Now it, 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 it's it was it's not flexing as much. So even though it's a shorter wheelbase, man, it's straight now. Well, the thing is, it, it simply was a really long wheelbase. It was a 124 inch car before. Um, and you talk to Jerry Bickle and you talk to a bunch of other chassis builders and if we would go out and buy a new chassis for the power level we were at, they would tell us to build a 115 inch car. Um, so that was kind of our target things like, and we were already, we were 57% front bias and we were really struggling to get the weight off the front. So that was why we thought we can kill two birds with one stone. We can go from 124 inch down to 114 inch. It gives us a chance to redo all our four-link bracketry, which had some play in it because it was built in 2000, and it was 19 years old, and it just plain had some play in it. Uh, so there was a combination of a lot of things we fixed in that transition, uh, but it really has helped the chassis a lot. So we want to get Emily in the truck. Um, I think Emily's looking Did I hear a rumor about Sunday after the event? No, we were going to, uh, uh, but then uh, Rusty Wallace had rented the track, and they pretty much told Ron no, that they oh, don't gotcha. want anybody else on the track. So that was the initial plan is we were going to make some test passes on Sunday afterwards and put Emily in the seat and finally get her some passes in it. But I think for right now the plan is that uh, Larson's going to continue to drive it in the points races and we're going to find some um, exhibition races or just some fun, you know, like no prep stuff or something like that. We'll put Emily in the seat for it. Cool. Cool. So. And every time, like I said, every time that goes down the track at Outlaw, uh, we donate. Um, uh, last year we raised about six thousand dollars. I know anybody out there that wants to contribute, we still have uh, we have some Save the Racks T-shirts that we sell. Hundred percent of the proceeds go uh, to the foundation as well. 
So we'll continue to follow the S10 and Amelie's, Amelie's truck throughout the year. I think Amelie's coming out to another one, I believe. This, I think she's coming to Shide, maybe? They're going to try to make Shide. Yeah. Um, they're going to be they're going to be going for through uh, over the Virginia race, but then we'll be back and uh, Shide is Edgar's birthday weekend, so he was going to try to make it out uh -oh. for that and uh, do some racing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're just happy to partner up with that. Uh, I, I, we're, we're thankful for Firepunk for carrying that torch with Save the Racks, and we just love the the Mueller family. They're just a, a great group, and uh, they although I should say. Firepunk fed us very, very well. The vendors at the race this weekend, like they had not just like a dinner thing, they had breakfast, lunch, yeah. and dinner. So thank you for that. But at the same time, I couldn't pass Edgar's, Edgar's swordfish. The swordfish, and the, the man has always got something on the grill over you, there. My swordfish. I came back, was that and yours? there was no fish left. <laughs> oh. I was like, where'd all the go? He was like, well, where were you at? I was like, I was out there. You didn't take care of me. Gotta be quick. Nah. <laughs> Gotta right. be quick. He's always got something on the grill. All right, so let's let's finish up with uh, Hot Shots and Firepunk. So, any any idea how many different times and different products we've tested with you guys? Hmm. I don't know. A lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For for those of us those who don't know, we reference Firepunk a lot. It's because we're pretty close. We're, I think, an hour. It takes about an hour um, between our shops. So. We do have a couple dinos uh, closer to us, yeah. but we'd much rather do our testing down down at Firepunk, and uh, we're fortunate to have the industry experts, you know, that that close when we're working on all this diesel stuff. So yeah, we're there a lot for testing. We just we just did some gas testing there, yeah, with the uh, with the Camaro and stuff. So that was that that's that was a crazy view to see a Camaro on your dyno too. I didn't <laughs> think I'd ever see that before. Yeah, it can happen. I know that's that's what I like about uh, doing that kind of testing because um, for the guys watching, like Hot Shots will often show up at Firepunk and they'll say, this is the product we want to test. And they say, let's test it. And so I'll go out and we'll pick one of our vehicles. This isn't something that Hot Shots uh, came around and they're using a, a poster child, so to speak. We'll put a vehicle on that has, you know, traditional oil in it or, or just no, no modifications to the fuel we we'll put on the dyno and we run like 10 passes on it, get absolute solid baselines and we treat it and we see what the results are. And if there's no results and then they go back home and they change it and then come back and try it again. And we don't sell something unless it has results. And that's why I can stand behind the Hot Shots brand because I have a dyno and I see it firsthand because I'm not interested in selling any of my customers something that doesn't work. But if I can show them the results, it's an easy sell. I mean, it's it's like here's the product, here's the results. Do you want to buy it or not? The man said it. <laughs> he said it all. Didn't have to say anything. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and thank you guys. Uh, personally, uh, we rely on you a lot for, for for the testing, but more so the trust you put in us to you know not just run our fluids and all your race trucks. And you know, we sponsor the entire Firepunk team, so right. all the Firepunk trucks. Uh, under the roof there are running our fluids and um, it's not just the test but sometimes these guys have it out there in the trucks before we release it to the public you know in our final testing and stuff so you guys have allowed us to bring our products to a whole nother level and what I get one question I get often asked is do we do something special for firepunk that you know do they get a special blend or something like that the answer is no like that's what you're running now, right? We, we got R5 right and the now. S10. 2050. I literally, when I bring oil down to these guys, I go grab it off of our our, our warehouse rack, whatever's in stock here. That we don't have a special Levon bottle or anything like that. <laughs> it was right. special developing the stuff, but once we get our stuff fully formulated and our final testing, and we got every inch of power and everything we can get out of it, we put our label on that and we sell it to the average Joe out there, just like it's the exact same stuff that these guys at Firepunk are running in their trucks. So you know it's right. been tried and tested to the fullest limits and like we say if it's good right. enough for those trucks it's good enough for your daily driver right exactly absolutely so thanks again bud i really appreciate it this was like experimental i didn't even know if you'd even face would pop up on it and um but uh we appreciate you being our first live video guest and uh and for an extended interview hopefully in the future uh if i got a question so maybe we'll we'll 
pop you up real quick and you can show us what truck you're working on in the shop or something like that. That's fine. <laughs> and congratulations yeah. on an awesome weekend. Uh, I know the whole industry was really uh, proud of it, happy about it. Us in Ohio, we thought you represented us well, and we're looking forward to the next one, man. Great. We are, too. We appreciate your support. Absolutely, bud. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Thanks, LeVon. Yep. And that, of course, was Mr. LeVon Miller. Uh, LeVon took this year off. Yeah. You know, just had a baby right during UCC. Um, he sold the truck, uh, you know, the Pro Street truck, right. the UCC three-time defending champion truck. He sold it to Josh Scruggs, who now Josh Scruggs sure. is inside the Firepunk family. But I'm willing to bet it's not the last time you see LeVon Miller in a truck. Yeah. Well, no, and and I'm I love that about the Millers is that they're they're family oriented. So, like they they understood that Levon was having a baby and but they kept him updated about everything going on at the UCC. Oh, so, yeah. so I mean, I mean, and he, it's just something to be able to work with that because we we always talk about us being a little family here at Hot Shots, but to work with somebody else who also is like a family atmosphere, it's it's awesome. Right. Right. Well, let's see if I have any follow up to it. Uh, we got. Holly says best national anthem at the track I've ever heard. It was. I, I, I guess Levon said it was a couple of their friends or something yeah. like that. It was a trio that like, it was a cappella trio national anthem. I'm sure it's online somewhere. It was awesome. Yeah, normally it's just like a recording or something, but no, it was. Well, was I really... think they did it earlier in the day. Yeah, yeah, they they did it at the beginning. And well, when I when I heard it early in the day, I wasn't up on the track. I was in the booth, and I thought it was like a professional recording. Right. And then when we went out there for they the finale, right they're standing there. right there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, these guys doing it live. So it, it was really cool. So find it on Facebook. Or, or, or actually, if you go to Motor Mania, Motor Mania TV on YouTube, you can watch, you can watch the live feed from, from this past weekend and watch the whole event all over again. Absolutely. I encourage you to go to uh, the evening finale and, and watch the, the presenting of the colors, Dorian with his truck. Uh, it was really special. It was just really cool, something I haven't seen in an outlaw race before. Uh, for firepunks to bring that in, that's awesome. Uh, Bearded Max says, you guys do tours at Hot Shots. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stop on by. We just, I just did one recently, uh, uh, not too long ago, and if somebody messaged me on Facebook, and I'm like, yeah, stop on by. If you're ever going down 71, we are literally like a stone's throw from I-71. So if you're coming through Central Ohio in 71, stop by. We'll show you, we'll tour the whole place, show you, the, show you everything. Especially you, Bearded Medic. You, you need a tour. Tudor says, I rebuilt my 6.1 Hemi. I'm in, I'm in long tube, catless mids, normal weight is 0W40. What weight of adrenaline would I need and can it be ran round in cold weather too? Good question, Chris. Uh, we have a, we have a 1540 um, Black Diamond. Black Diamond and adrenaline i well i have to ask uh, kevin yeah, about the winter part i was gonna say since it's a your, your catalyst you can run it zero forty right now so i mean he might be safe with like the adrenaline i'll check answer is yes but but i'll have to check on the winter weight for you on that um lynn's wife carrie was one of the singers oh yeah. that's cool oh i didn't even know that Justine just said that. Well, it was amazing. It Either was way. awesome. It was. It, it was, was awesome. Uh, Trey Sykes says R three or four would be my assumption. Trey still on? Is Trey available? You want to bring Trey on real yeah, quick? Yeah, go ahead. Let's see, let's, let's check this new technology. Yeah, out. Let's look, look at. See if we can bring Trey up. He can tell us about yeah, that. Yeah. That seven point six nine nine nine. And for those of you, we've got. We run this through Skype now, so if you got ah, look, look at this, the, the lumberjack. lumberjack. <laughs> Hello, can you see me? We yeah, can we see, see you. you. I don't think you can probably see us though, can you? And uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, as long as you can see me, then that's what you'd see. <laughs> get the, What's up, Trey? Yeah. You in the car? Yeah, we're just sitting. Yeah, no, I'm in the car. I'm sitting outside of a, you know, a dealer here. I'm potential dealer i'm dropping off some product and some invoices and uh sitting outside of uh todd Prevet restorations here dropping off some today nice We've already been to already been to tier one earlier today talked to matt and dustin uh, you saw an awesome video from tier one right 
Yeah, that's the one from uh, earlier this week where they did the the balance rates on the 6.0 and showed how the Stiction Eliminator helped that out. Yeah, if you guys haven't uh, seen that video, go check it out. Uh, it's uh, still on the Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, has it made it to YouTube yet, Levi? Yeah. Yep, yep it's on the YouTube page as well. Uh, Trey stopped by Tier 1. They were having some crazy injectors they were like negative 44. 44 yeah it was crazy and they put it on they put stiction in and just idled it up to like 1200 i think and within an hour all those all those were within well, the i think the biggest thing was like five minutes later yeah he, they, he's like hey we had to throttle it down because it was it, yeah. sticking the injector so, so check out that video it's uh it's it's it's, it's really good and uh uh thanks for it and they're, they're they're a new dealer now right trey yeah, they're, they're new dealers. They um, just got their display set up a few days ago. Uh, brought them some more product back from uh, the Zinnia race this weekend. They are super stoked. And uh, we're going to be doing some fun stuff with them next week. We've got a, a, a three-way deal working with Ziegler, uh, Justin Ziegler. Okay. And out Tier of Ohio. One and Yep, out of Ohio. Um, Tier 1, Ziegler, me, and you guys at Hot Shots, we're all going to kind of go together and help out a guy with an 08 uh, 64 power stroke. We're going to document that. That'll be a, a good video for you guys to watch, and we're going to put that out. That's actually my boss's truck. He should be watching. And <laughs> there's some uh, there's some fun special things we're going to do that are secret that he doesn't know about, but it's uh, it, he's going to enjoy it, and he's going to be very happy. So... Um, doing some some big things coming up here and uh i can't wait it's gonna awesome. be a great time but i love the cooperation between the different hot shots dealers and then the companies helping you know with this stuff and and it's just like a family it's like a big family it's great yeah so. we say that a lot here and there's a lot of truth to that so so speaking of family brother we gotta we, we everyone's been talking about your uh your 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 770 index finals and what that what that time slip said there at the end so take us through that run first of all it was ryan riddle another sponsored driver of, of hot shots who's just a killer in that class to start with and i was pumped that we had two hot shot seeker drivers in the finals so i won regardless but tell us about that race because it was a heck of a race absolutely so we uh we knew we were going to be running each other in the final, and I knew he had to go run ET first. Um, I had to give a shout out to Terry Rossberg with the jet car. He let me run an extension cord over to his uh, his trailer over there to get a fan to cool down my uh, mass airflow sensor between that run to just get me back down because I was in the lanes and waiting on Ryan to come back. But I know when I'm running Ryan, and I'm sure Ryan knows when he's running me, that it's going to be a good run. We're going to give each other everything we've got. And on the time slip, you saw that that's what it was. Um, we go up, do the burnout. I'd have to do the burnout on rear-wheel drive. Ryan pulls around the water. You know, we stage pretty even off the line. He had me by two hundredths on the reaction time. And up top, I got to the line first by four thousandths and broke it out by one ten thousandth and i calculated that out at the mile an hour we were traveling that puts me at uh finishing ahead of him by four millimeters too much oh. so, oh. so we're gonna put about <laughs> i don't know i'm gonna say we're gonna back down that lub lubricity formula by about a quarter mil millimeter <laughs> when we go to Virginia and then we're going to be about where we need to be now. But, um, yeah, it was a great run. It's when you have a 4,000 stripe and you break out one ten thousand, I mean, you can't really complain about it. That's no. just a good run. Right. Both drivers did their jobs, both vehicles did their jobs. And then that's one of those things where you look up and, and you hope your wind light comes on. But, um, I'm, I can't get mad about that. And the good news is, Every time that I, I, lo I lose, I try to dissect that time slip and figure out what happened. And if I can figure out why that happened and not let it happen again, then I'm learning. And, you know, as long as you learn from your losses, you're doing well. You can, you can grow as a driver. So. And heck of a race. That's what the final should be. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Now, but that was what we were talking about a little bit ago with LeVon. The he it actually he got deep into the 
the lightning red lighted on him. So they had to rerun that race. Right. That was against uh, Tristan. Yeah, Tristan, Tristan Dunlap. Tristan, uh, had, had, semi, yeah. had already beat you and gone to the final, but that's what uh, LeVon was talking yeah. about. There's a little uh, rules problem. Felt bad for Tristan, uh, but, you know, rerun, rerun it, was it, the right thing to do, and I think they handled it right. And uh, It's tough on everyone. I mean, like, I think it's one of those things that track hadn't had the ODSS around before. Um, there's specific, and, and, and I've seen it because of, of all the different races I've gone to tracks around the country and, and each series has their own set of rules and everyone kind of share, shares it with the track before the beforehand. And then there's so much information and everything's going so quick. Nobody's you know going to be able to, to follow everything to a T, right. but as long as it's, it's fair and everyone, you know, gets treated the same and, and things happen the way they should then then it gets worked out so it's unfortunate but it did it, it kind of seem to be handled fairly by greg jolly and i'll commend him for that yep i agree any other uh any other takeaways from this this weekend uh our first ohio odss race you know it was one of the things that you know a lot of drivers might not notice it um or spectators or whatever but um earlier when when you guys were talking the uh the 15 person group from the youth group that local church yeah um uh, man they were riding around on that golf cart they were changing out the trash bags and the trash cans and they were parking people the right way and they all had a smile on their face and they were standing out in the heat all day and just just for a volunteer group like that that and i don't know any of these people but they just Every time I passed them, they had a smile on their face and they waved at us. And and to see people like that helping out, right? You don't you don't see that around the country. But I tell you, like so, Mid Ohio, man, you guys have some very nice people. It is a it's a great experience to come by and see people just being nice to you because you go to certain parts of the country, and you're not going to necessarily get that. So I, I really love coming to Mid Ohio, the middle of Ohio, and and, and just talking to people and just the experiences I get coming up there. So it's great. I, I got to tell a quick story to speak to that. This is a true story. Uh, to that church group that helped out uh, Firepunk, I, I was talking, to, I think I was talking to Lynn, and up pulls one of the little golf carts with, with a couple yeah. of the, the young church group. And this kid hops off with the biggest smile on his face, energetic, happy to be there, everything. And I just said, excuse me, Mr. Miller, where can we find a plunger? <laughs> I'm just like... With a smile on his face. I'm just thinking, man, he's dealing with a bad job right now if he's asking for that. Yeah. But did it with a smile, you know. So, yeah, we're going to be thankful for all the help we got. And I, and I also will speak to Mid-Ohio from a little bragging, I'll say, because I, Emily told me um, when she was running, she ran 670 and 770. Right. And even in, you know, when you were getting your testing tunes in and stuff, she told me, she's like, man, these guys up here in Ohio are no joke. And that's why I was telling uh, LeVon earlier. I, I kept hearing like 670 and a 3, 670 and a 7, 770 and a 4. Yep. Guys yep. were on their numbers, you know, and, and, and Emily pointed that out to me. She's like, yeah, when I go racing down in Texas, yeah, you know, there's some people that get it dialed in, you know, but for open and qualifying, for that many people to be on top of that number, she's like, I knew it was going to be a tough weekend, and yep. we certainly saw some really good racing. Absolutely. Um and some people might not realize it because we do have last names. Uh, my wife is running the series in the ET bracket class. She's out there in the uh, VW Touareg, which is what I'm in right now. Holly, um, you in the race Holly, car right now? Uh, I'm in. Uh, yeah, I'm in Holly's race car right now because uh, got room in the back for me to put all this product I'm delivering today. So, but uh, one thing we did before we left is I I changed the oil. I put a Green Diamond 540 in and some Stiction Eliminator got up there and we got 28 miles per gallon on the way up and tj can tell you how much product i left with so we're, we're loaded down with probably 600 pounds extra on the way home and we stopped and we filled up and we put in some of the special lubricity formula um all the racers oh that's get a right you told me about this diesel extreme yeah so so i put in a 16 ounce diesel extreme because all the racers get that I put in um, two ounces of the Libricity formula I had left, and we filled up and we drove home. Same route, same cruise control, extra weight in the back, 
and this is the best I've ever gotten in this thing by far. I got 32.7 miles per gallon on the way home. Wow. Um, that's like a 17% increase. Now, I'm, I'm sure there's that's not going to be everyone's experience, but that's amazing. Were you downhill all uh, the way I, or something? Oh, no, nah, <laughs> I wish. No, we're, we're climbing, you know, we're going through West Virginia, which, yeah, there's downhill, but if you've got a downhill, you're coming right back and uphill. <laughs> So it's the same route and everything. So, so you basically mix, mix um, Diesel Extreme, EDT, and the new Lubricity product. Yep. And Kids, we don't recommend know, that at home. Yeah, I was going to say, that might not be something that uh, is going to be recommended, but this is a race car, and we do what we, we want to. You know, we're, we're drag racers. We're going we're gonna to have fun with it. But <laughs> just, you, you know, I could see a mile or two per gallon, you know, MPG increase. This was a 5 MPG increase um, in an and a 5,000 pound with nobody in it, all wheel drive, you know, six cylinder, 3.0 liter V6 turbo diesel, you know, 28 miles per gallon is impressive anyway, but then we got almost 33 loaded down with products. I, I was, I was quite shocked. So that's impressive. Kudos to that. I, I'm impressive. happy about that for sure. Maybe, maybe um, we're going to have to figure out your exact dosage and bottle that the, 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 the lumberjack mix. Well, we could do that, you know, and we we already know that we need at least 40 ounces in that BMW. <laughs> uh, we need 40 ounces of EDT in that BMW, and and uh, there's some other things, but I'm I'm excited for a few weeks from now. We're going to be at Virginia Motorsports Park, and I I assure you that we uh I've learned from that loss. I've been thinking about it nonstop, and I've got a a slightly different idea for staging and, and we're going to do some things. So I think that running up in 770 was great. Very happy about that, but we're going to be pushing, pushing even harder. And I'm looking for some trophies at this next race. Yeah. I Not think just you're one, sitting, two. I'd, sitting number three in the series right now. Yeah. I'm number three in, in 770 points. I um, think number one and number two are also hot shots drivers. If I'm not mistaken. Right. Pretty sure, yeah. Nick Morris and uh, Ryan Riddle. Yeah. Yep. That's that's amazing. So, that these guys using hot shots all just kind of could all find them at the top. The uh, winner's circles. And, and and, Kyle in Kyle's terms earlier in the season, we pick winners. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or or maybe or, or maybe the products turn people into winners. I mean, you know, you could look at it. You know, if 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 you know what you're doing, you're going to pick the best thing that you can to help you win. And uh, and that's what what Hot Shot Secret products are. Every single one of them I've ever used, I've I've just been blown away. Um, uh, well, it's like Levon said earlier fact, too. Like he's not going to use something that doesn't work. And people ask me this question uh, before too. And and I don't. I have to sit it with Levon on it here. I've never paid Levon Miller a dollar. Mm -mm. We don't we, like. There's uh, no endorsement deal there or anything. Like they we have their their logo on our FR3 bottle. You know. Yeah. Well, and a lot of, people think that because a lot of companies do that, right? Where they'll they'll buy their way into making you be a sponsor no. for them, but that's not what we do. Levon actually was selling another product that is pretty big name in the market and tested it against our FR3. That's where he was sold, right. and that's why this has all become something great. Right. So it's 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 nice to have drivers like like Trey, Levon, the whole Firepunk crew, um, all these guys in the top three and in the winner's circle and everything. Uh, they, they really put our products to the test, and, and like you said, Trey, I don't know if it's the chicken or the egg thing, uh, but regardless, we're, there's there's a coincidence there of our drivers doing really well. We're really proud to support them. Uh, we're, we're, we're proud of you, Trey, for coming up this this from North Carolina, representing our brand well, kicking butt in the Absolutely. BMW. Uh, yep. Back here now in the lot, um, I might try to kick some butt in it next weekend here at a local race. So stay tuned I want for you that. To, I want you to. I want you to. You know, you got drag radios now. There's no excuses. So, <laughs> and uh, it, and if you can't do it, TJ's next in line. So, <laughs> never, never. so but I did want to say, you know, up here at, uh, I don't just drive in the diesel series. Obviously, I've got a few other things that I drive. Um, we, uh, we've got the Malibu that I've driven before a lot last year. We had some issues, cracked a transmission in it earlier this spring. So here at Todd Prevet Restorations, we're fixing that today, and I brought some uh, Nano Shift, some uh, R9 gear oil. We run the R5 uh, engine oil already, so 
the entire powertrain is going to be adrenaline products in this Malibu, and we'll have it out sometime in the next few weeks. And uh, in July, I think we can uh, put it in the winter circle with the entire powertrain having adrenaline products in it. Nice. So we're doing some big things. Uh, also got some other stuff with the, with the other cars I drive. So we're going to have fun. Um, we're going to put some more promotional videos out that I've got planned and and everything. So I appreciate everything you guys are doing. So just stay tuned and be ready because there's going to be a lot more uh, a lot more fun things coming down. There's a lot there's so. a lot of lumberjack coming. I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks, buddy. Thanks for uh, popping online with us real quick. We appreciate it. And let's do more of it now that uh, we've got this capability. You mind popping in whenever we uh, call on you? You call me, I will answer the phone. Deal. Uh, not a problem. Just give me a two-minute warning so I have a shirt on, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I do have pictures of you this weekend with your shirt off saving Tom Perini's car in the rain. That was pretty You know, it, I felt... I felt so bad, you know, it was a it was a downpour of rain, you know, like there was a car cover on Tom Perini's car, but he's got these exposed carburetors and what are you gonna do? Watch a man's, you know, thirty thousand dollar engine get ruined because it's getting rain in it? No. So I just ripped off my shirt and I, I took some stuff and, and uh covered everything up and I think he ended up being fine, but I'm not gonna and that's just for anybody. It's not because it was Tom Perini's car. If I see anybody in, in trouble and they're not there, like, I'm going to do what I can to help them out. So um, that goes for anybody. But, yeah. We just need a cape it. for you next time. It's on you. you get it. <laughs> I'll wear it. All right, brother. All right, Good talking with you. Thanks for chiming call. in. We'll, yeah, uh, we'll catch up with you soon, Trey. Sounds good. There you go. I think we had a couple more questions. Trey, the lumberjack want to get to pops me. in. Yeah, we're overdue. I yeah. figured that would happen, but let's uh, see. <sighs> Two tour the beard oil factory. Brent Hillary would try to stop by. Awesome. Miller rig ready for rallying. Awesome, Logan. Keep us posted on that. Chris Stewart, that was going to be a question I had. I just started using the Extreme and EDT. How soon will I notice a difference? Uh, pretty quickly with the on the fuel additive side of things. Yeah. Uh, depending on how how dirty the system might be uh running running stream through it you'll, you'll feel it in that yeah. first tank for, first 16 ounces you would be able to feel it mm -hmm. right. logan says i've got better mpg in my f-150 using stiction eliminator and gasoline extreme going from 15.4 to 19.7 yeah. yeah must have been a lot of carbon buildup you must have had a lot of carbon buildup <laughs> logan so 4.3 gain that is over 25%. Yeah, so he's That's it. impressive, Logan. See, people, like, if we say that, nobody believes us. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, good to see real world results out there. So thanks for chiming in. Jim Access, is that oil in them jugs? Synthetic. <laughs> that, that's not just your regular grandpa synthetic. That's the new PAO full synthetic. Yeah. That's our four. adrenaline racing adrenaline line racing. out there, so absolutely so we got a little over um we said we we're going to give away some fr3. fr3 so how about uh chris tudor matt rice and logan cavender why don't you guys uh send us a message a private message and send us your address and we will send out some fr3 to you guys what i like to call our magic sauce Good and everything. Gas, diesel, lawnmowers, door hinges, beards. Right? Yeah, that's unicorn oil. <laughs> that's the unicorn oil. <laughs> like and share our Facebook page. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to stick with this Thursday 1.30 thing, I think, for a yep, couple weeks. Couple weeks um, let us know what you think. Let us know if this is better for you, if it's worse for you, uh, um, or whatnot. We'll stick with it for a little bit and see how it goes. And... I think we'll be back next Thursday at 1.30 then, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, we're all in town next week, so yep. that will help out. Any closing words do you have or no. any wrap-up from the race weekend? No, I, I mean, thank you to everybody that they stopped by the booth and talked to us. Some people had problems they wanted us to help them fix. Some people just loved to 
be able to. Some people right in Ohio didn't realize we were right here in Ohio with them. Right. So I mean, it was it was awesome. And a lot of people know. come by just buy swag. Too. Yeah, exactly. People come by buy t-shirts. We love that. That's awesome. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, and there were some people who said, "Hey, your guys' sh- shops about two hours away. I never wanted to drive up there, and it's great that you guys came down here. I bought a lot of stuff, and can go home happy." So. Thank so you. thanks again for Trey Sykes for popping in at the end of our, our, our episode there. Big thanks to LaVon Miller for being our Absolutely. first ever live feed guest. So I think you guys, let us know how you thought about that too. Well, we've got tons of dealers across the country, across, across the globe really. Uh, we've got tons of race car drivers that we support and sponsor different teams. We'd be happy to bring these guys on on our, on our, on our talks and so it can kind of bring a little more entertainment and value. And it's not just us telling you, but maybe we can get our dealers on to tell you about how they use our products, how, how our race teams do. And if, if you enjoyed that, let us know. We'll schedule more of it. Um, until then, I guess we'll see you, too, see you next Thursday. Yeah, big country out. See you guys.